Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Mobile Gadgeteer. As you can see in front of me, I have a box <clears throat> that contained the Nook Color from Barnes & Noble, which is uh, going to become available, uh, I believe, later this week and uh, next week. And I Actually, this was announced on October 26th, I believe, and that day I pre-ordered mine. I went back and later canceled it because uh, I didn't see a need for it and didn't have hands-on. Um, thought my iPad would be just fine for ebook reading. But I have to say, after a couple hours of playing with this device, I may go back and order one for myself at uh, 249 So this is the box, <clears throat> which is much better than the plastic one they had uh, with the original Nook that was very hard to open. And as you can see here, it has some magnetic... Oh, a couple pieces fell down. It has a magnetic closure to it. <clears throat> and the top is the, where the Nook was at, along with a nice uh, quick start guide. You can see here, and then the bottom was this little box, and inside the box is simply a um, a charger and uh, a USB cable. So as you can see, USB cable and then the uh, the Nook labeled charger with the uh, retractable prongs and the USB end. Okay, so. Pretty basic packaging, and here's the device itself. Let me just move the box out of the way a little bit here. And get in there. So here's the uh, the Nook color itself, and uh, I have to say, after holding it, I almost went out and placed my order, and I still may before this review uh, time is up. Um, it just feels fantastic in your hand. Um, as you can see here, there's an opening. It's actually I couldn't tell from the pictures, but this is actually like a loop. It has a very solid feel of the plastic on the front on the back we swing around here it has the nook symbol but it has this entire thing the entire surface of the back is kind of a rubber with a large opening for the speaker there it says nook down here on the bottom is a micro usb connection for um, both charging and connection to your pc you know for adobe digital editions and epubs from the library things there's a uh, power button on the top left over on the top right, we have a plus and minus for the volume button. And that's it. There's no other buttons. There's no uh, no buttons along the side for changing the pages or anything else. And then the center here is a raised button. You can kind of see down there. There's a raised button for the Nook button. And if we push that, <coughs> we then see that we have the, uh, the ability to unlock the Nook, which is similar to an Android device where we actually slide it over and wake it up right now we can go back to the screen there now before I get too far into showing you uh, some of the software and everything else this has a 7 inch what they call a vivid view color touchscreen it's an IPS 16 million color display uh, 1024 by 600 pixels with 169 pixels per inch <clears throat> has uh, six different fonts to choose from different font styles background colors uh, expandable storage I didn't even check to see where that was at. It has a micro USB port somewhere on here. Let me just pop open the micro SD card slot is down here. Interesting. There we go. So that's easy to get to. As you can see, it's underneath the little uh, loop area. And there's a little magnet, it looks like. And we can see underneath there is the micro USB card slot. So that's easy to get to and convenient. That's interesting. Uh, supports up to 32 gigabyte cards. You know, it's a media player, and I'll show you some of that. Has a mono speaker in the back, that thing that I showed you in the back there. Uh, three and a half millimeter headset jack. Oh, I forgot the top. That's three and a half millimeter headset jack up top. Um, it says it will play up to 100 hours of audio, and um, it says you can watch videos in MP4, MP4 format. So I'm actually going to find some videos and put it on there because if uh, the videos actually work well. And I'll show that here in a second. The videos work well, then this could be a nice uh, video device with a 7 inch screen. File types, of course, just like the other Nook, uh, EPUB, including um, non DRM or Adobe DRM ones, the PDFs, including Adobe PDFs for the library, um, pretty much, you know, Word docs, all those kind of things, MP3 files, MP4. It doesn't support Lit or um, Amazon Kindle, of course. She says you can read for up to eight hours without recharging with the wireless off. So the battery life is much less than what it was on the original Nook. Uh, it does have 802.11bg Wi-Fi. 
and uh, some extras and things like that. So that's kind of the hardware specs. Now let's kind of take a look at the uh, the device itself and how it works. And it seems to be my camera is, is kind of refreshing at a different rate than uh, this, so that hopefully it doesn't show up too much of the, the flashing. So here's kind of the home screen, right? And then if I tap on this button down here, we see that the kind of what we saw in the older Nook, and actually, let me just show you that. I'll bring my uh, my original Nook here. So here's my original Nook. As you can see, the new one is a bit taller, and it's a, uh, I guess it's not a bit narrow. It's the same width. It is quite a bit heavier um, than the original Nook. And of course, this the original Nook had the... Uh, the page turning buttons and a e-ink display. This one is completely color. So when we tap that um, bottom icon there, it will actually show up the kind of menu that we have. And um, I still like my original Nook, but I gotta tell you, this is pretty sweet. So we tap the tap the button there. We see there's library. We can jump in here, see the library, and you know there was some content loaded up on the device. There's uh, magazines, newspapers, your shelf, your files. As we can see, there's the memory card and the Nook itself. Media review. We have some files in here, All right? Some um, magazines. So I tap on Popular Science. So one thing that's cool about the magazines I discovered is we flip it over here into a landscape view, right? So now, if you tap on the magazine, right? Tap on it. You can then see a visual. Um, navigation area so you can sit there and just kind of go let's see where do I want to go in the magazine let's read about the express train to space tap on it and it pops up right now you can double tap and scroll around and read it that way or you can tap this thing up here called article view and express choose an article right so now it kind of blows up the article so you get the text of the article and you can just scroll up and down and actually read the text of the article without you know having to scroll around on the magazine like you like you would so it's kinda nice because you can kinda get to the magazine part of the magazine read the text jump back and forth and things like that it also works in in portrait mode as well okay so let's go back go back to my library let's see okay so it does take me back to the last place I was as you can see there was a couple of the magazines they loaded on here let's see if the newspapers I did uh, purchase one edition of a newspaper just to kind of see what it looked like so then if you're reading something like say a newspaper you tap on that and then you have options at the bottom if we tap on content you can see that we can see the contents notes and highlights or bookmarks you can quickly jump between those by tapping them there's a search option here and you can type in the search word and as you can see the keyboard is actually quite nice um, it, and it's context sensitive I'll show you in the browser how that's different uh, you can share, right? You can share, recommend this a newspaper or book or whatever, rate and review, post your reading status. And you can do that, and I'll show you, with Facebook or Twitter. Text, in this particular one, we see there's the six sizes, and then there's different uh, fonts that you can choose from. And normal light gray, you can choose, whoops, sorry. You can choose uh, how you want the page to appear wide and how the spacing between the uh, the text is and things like that. And then there's the brightness controls down here. And if we turn it up all the ways, you can see it does get pretty bright. Down low for nighttime reading. And I don't think there's an auto brightness. I think it's fully controlled by you. So that's a newspaper. Um, let's check out a book. Book is kind of the same way. So we tap on the middle of the book, right? And you can see one thing about the book is you now have a scroll bar, so you can quickly jump anywhere within the book. Um, and then all the same things, the content, search, share, text, and brightness. And let's see, oh, that book isn't going into landscape. and I'm not sure if books uh, are dependent upon that or not. So if we go to shop, we can go in here, we can go to the store, right? And... Uh, that's some newspaper. That's the newspapers I was looking at. Go back to the shop here. So there's the main shop, and you can scroll through it. It's a nice looking shop. You can say browse, and here you can go browse kids' picture books, flying off the shelves, um, books, magazines. We come in here to magazines. 
I'll see all, see what they got for magazines in here. You can see there's PC Magazine, New York Times, Scientist, and so on. You can buy an issue or subscribe to the magazine. So that's the shop. It's pretty much the store. Search kind of showed you that a little bit. You can search your nook, looking for different things. Extras has chess, contacts, crossword, gallery, lend me, which is the ability to loan the... Um, the books out. There's some music, Pandora and Sudoku. If you tap on Pandora, so it lets you uh, you can actually log into Pandora. But I've already logged in. You can jump to your stations and see some of your stations. You can close that, and if you can add the station, log off, and we could play. And the button up here will control the media volume. Let's see, is that working? Uh, landscape? No, it's a portrait. As you can see, it's kind of a nice uh, Pandora experience, and this will completely play in the background. You know, it's a Wi-Fi only connection; it's not 3G, but it'll play as you're reading. So you can put on jazz or something else to to listen to as you're reading. Uh, music, I don't think unless there's any on here. There's a nice looking uh, music player. I see there's a voice control. Hmm. Or voice. It looks like a voice recording. Maybe that's just browsing those. Go back to extras, there's the games, crossword, galleries, uh, image gallery, I believe. Yes, yeah, so there we go. There is some images on here. You can see, actually, it has the uh, ability to crop, rotate the image. Instead of this wallpaper, right? We can scroll through some of these different images that are loaded on here. It's a nice, uh, you can load it up with... Uh, with some pictures and use it. Let's see. Oh, it does support the pinch to zoom, right? And how about landscape? See, this was something that uh, on my iPad, everybody always used it primarily as a picture viewer at first and an ebook reader. This is a couple things that I use it for, in addition to some of the apps, but uh, I could definitely see using this for a picture viewer and a reader. Hmm, interesting. A much cheaper iPad, maybe. Without all the apps, of course, but there is—I uh, believe there's going to be an SDK, and this is based on Android, so you may get some uh, some further apps now that they have a couple. And let's go to the web browser, right? So here we are in the web browser. Let's go to the mobile gadget here site, and as you can see, it's serving up the full internet. It's not uh, serving up mobile websites or anything else. And there you go. We can uh, do a double tap, zoom into an area. There is no pinch to zoom on the browser. It actually has plus and minus down here. You can see, kind of see how fast it zooms in and out. Up top here, you have some options, right? For uh, bookmarks, windows, more options. We tap on here, downloads, page settings. Let's go to settings, see what we've got. So text size, default zoom, open the pages and overview, block up hopper, block up windows, load images, landscape only display, JavaScript, plugins, set your home page, open the background, a lot of settings to go through there. Select the text, find on the page. So it's quite a functional browser actually, we see on there. And actually it, look, it looks great on this, on this display. Come back here, we'll go into settings, and here's a bunch of settings, right? We've got our wireless settings, we've got some screen settings as far as orientation, brightness, timeout, some sounds for muting and media volume, notification volume, time, security, keyboard, app settings for home, shopping, about the passwords and things like that, and then the social. That's why I wanted to kind of show you the social part here. So we come into social, we can link your Facebook account, your Twitter account, and a Google account. And the Google is used for importing contacts. And then uh, the sharing is via Facebook or Twitter. And then there's some uh, search items and you tap. You can select what is searchable. Extras, uh, which is names of the applications, the browser, the library by default, and then music and the shopping. Let me see if this main page goes in landscape. So there are some, you know, and it's not everything is in landscape. It is uh, within like magazines and some web and the web page. 
And did I show that? I don't think I showed the web in landscape. I believe that, yeah, the web web actually looks great in landscape, as you can see on the mobile gadgeteer site here. And if we scroll around, it's a nice experience. And with uh, with this, the music player and the photo viewer, you know, if you're looking for a large color photo viewer for 249, it's much cheaper. It's half the price of an iPad. Plus, you get uh, the full reading experience. Oh yes, the reading experience. Let me go back to that again, because there's um, there's children's books here, and I've I got a video of my daughter watching the book. She was enthralled with it actually. So let's go to like the Elephant's Child. Um, it pops into landscape by default actually. So there's two options here with children's books. You can have read by myself, and you just simply read it, right? Or you can say read to me, and we'll see what happens here. Oh, let me turn it up a little bit. By Rudyard Kipling, adapted by long ago, elephants had no trunks. They had only blackish, bulgy noses, as big as boots. Their noses were suitable for sniffing and for wriggling side to side, but absolutely useless for picking things up. In these far-off times, there was one elephant's child in Africa who was born with. The so, as you can see, when you uh, when you choose to have it read to you, it has inflections. It's very enthralling and uh, engaging. I mean, um, book reading experience. Now, if I say read it by myself, we tap that and we simply go through and we read it. Now, some of these, the text kind of may be kind of hard for a kid to read. What you do is tap on it. And it pops it out in the white background so that it's easier for the child to read, right? Then you can tap it back, goes back down. And then if we also decide while we're in there to have it read for that particular section. In these far off times, there was one elephant's child. So we can have it read for that specific section without going back to the home screen again. And then we move on to the next one, right? And we can read it ourselves. And if we get stuck on a word that we might not know, we simply tap on it and push play. And I'll read One day, the elephant's child asked his aunt ostrich, "Why are your feathers so long?" And then just tap back out, and it closes it. And I believe that it's only landscape for that particular book, and maybe for some. So, Kari, what do you think about watching uh, the book being read to you? It's awesome. You're into the story, aren't you? Um, almost. No, I mean, you're into it. You like it, don't uh, you? Yeah. I haven't heard that story of you. Mm -mm. Sounds pretty good. Poor elephant. It's a pretty engaging experience and to keep them entertained. Um, it's definitely a nice device. I mean, the hardware feels fantastic in your hand. And I have to say, with, uh, with the ability to do uh, the photo, the gallery there, and Pandora, and the promise of some other things, and then with a nice web browser, it's almost, and, and the ebook reader, that's almost all I do on my iPad. However, I do on the iPad read uh, books from Kindle, Nook, and, uh, and some other places. However, a couple things I forgot to show, viewer and movies and things like that. So let's go, um, as I showed before, we have the browse there. You can have music that you can put on there, magazines, newspapers, uh, wallpapers, pictures. Let's, let's go to documents. And as you can see, well, maybe you can't. Let me see if the focus here. Sorry if the focus is off. Actually, I learned that. Uh, let me adjust the brightness because I think if the brightness is up higher, it doesn't flicker. Sorry about that earlier. So here we are in the documents, right? And you can see there's a Word document, a spreadsheet, and a PDF. If I tap on the Word document, so there's a trailer packing list. If I tap down at the bottom, we have page view, properties and about and if we go to about you can see that this is actually quick office software 
that's licensed for the Barnes & Noble uh, Nook color. Then you go back, go to a spreadsheet, and you can view the spreadsheet, and it's just viewing, so you can't create the spreadsheet. But then if you flip it over, it's a great viewer for spreadsheets and things. If you tap in here, you can jump to different worksheets, you can go to a cell, you can view the properties or about, and you can search within both the spreadsheet and uh, Word document. Let's go back to a PDF. This is actually a review of mine that I've saved uh, from back in 2002 on the uh, original Sidekick. So we got, uh, whoops, yeah. I'm trying to see if there was pinch to zoom. Some kind of a zooming ability there. And as you can see, the PDF where it reads quite nicely. It's pretty fast. It has the pictures in there. So for somebody who reads a lot of PDFs, this could be a really nice device for that. I mean, $250 and you get a, a nice color PDF reading capability um, in the device, which is always something that hasn't really been great on uh, on the Nook and other e-ink display uh, devices, except for like the Kindle DX was a great uh, PDF viewer. But everything else always kind of lacks something, but this one actually looks quite decent, and I could put some of my uh, Naval Architecture ship resources on there. So, By the way, I, I have ordered my own uh, Nook color again, and here's another reason. If we go to videos, it supports MP4 formats. And as you can see, a minute here. Of course, the mono speaker is not that great, but you can plug in your headphones. And now you have a 7 inch, uh, nice resolution display um, movie viewing device, which would be perfect on airplanes. Now, what I'm going to be doing in uh, What I plan on doing with some other tests is uh, seeing how many movies I can watch, like on an airplane or something like that. Um, you know, can I watch two airplane? Can I watch two movies um, and still have the ability to read books and things like that? So that's another uh, another couple things that are uh, quite powerful in the Nook Color. Great phone, and uh, hopefully on soon on my Windows phone. So that's a quick look and uh, first impressions of the Nook Color from Barnes and Noble. I'll have more as I dive uh, further into the device and uh, take a look at it some more. Thanks for watching.